All right, so we want to take a closer look at this storm and what's causing it. Let's head over to Jeff Verdelli. Jeff, thanks for joining us so early in the morning. What does the forecast for the storm look like right now? Yeah, I don't think we can understate this. This is really a very dangerous situation, and in some cases it could be extraordinary. The reason I say that is one of our computer models is predicting close to 20 inches of rain in a very narrow swap to the south of Monterey. 20 inches of rain is a lot anywhere. Even in Florida, 20 inches of rain will cause flooding, but when you push that much rain up against the hills, uh, it's, it could be disastrous, mudslides, landslides, so this is really a big deal. Um, now, it may not be 20 inches, it may be 12 inches, but that's still a ton of rain. You can see that band of rain right there. Now, at the moment, it's kind of making its way south, right? So that would be good. If it continues moving south, it produces a few inches of rain, it moves on, no big deal. But the problem is it's going to get stuck right around Big Sur. So in between Monterey, uh, you know, Santa Cruz, and Santa Barbara, right along this coast. Not an extraordinarily heavily populated area, but a lot of hills, a lot of mountains. It's going to get stuck and just sit there for, you know, 36 hours over the same area. Notice some of those burn scars. There are some more burn scars around here too and this is where the heaviest rain is going to be look at that you know anywhere in the purple well that's generally six to 12 inches of rain but like i said a couple of our computer models show over a foot with some up to 20 inches in this area so you can see look at all that mountainous terrain right there that mountainous terrain funnels that 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 rainfall down you know it just rolls down downhill and it can cause disastrous flash flooding also the mountains by the way look at that we're going to see as much as six plus more feet of snow in total 10 feet of snow possible in the sierra nevada range so that means like two of me almost two of you Anne marie piled on top of each other standing on top mm -hmm. of each other that's how high the snow is going to be out there yeah, two of me, probably not you. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that does sound like a major, major inconvenience at best, but it's a problem at worst. Um, so all of this is actually being call caused by something called at an atmospheric river. What is that? And, you know, it, it seems every time we talk about severe weather, all roads lead back to climate change. So is there a climate change connection here? Yeah, we can talk about all that for sure. So first of all, you know, there's been a, 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 an incredible drought in, in the West. So in some ways it's good. We're gonna get good snowpack. That'll be good for, you know, any water shortages that might come as we head towards summertime. That's good news, but it's all happening too much at one time. And that is a symptom to some degree of climate change. I mean, this kind of extreme weather happens in California, but it's getting more extreme because the atmosphere has more capacity to hold water now because it's warmer. So it, like a sponge, it, it, it squeezes out more moisture. So extremes are increasing in the West. One of those extremes is drought. So you go from extreme drought, whiplash, they call it, weather whiplash, Flash to extreme flood. That's what we're seeing. And most of the damage, 95% of the damage in California and along the West Coast uh, when it comes to flash flooding happens because of atmospheric rivers. So take a look at subtropical moisture coming all the way from the Pacific Ocean. It slams into the mountains and into those burn scars. We go under the clouds. You can see those mountains and you can see how as the radar kind of moves on, how it gets squeezed out by the mountains right here along the central coast. And if you have a burn scar, then you really have problems because the burn scar, uh, you know, makes the, the ground very vulnerable. It doesn't allow that water to absorb into the ground. It also, you know, burned all the trees and the vegetation, so there's nothing to kind of hold the ground in place. That's why it's so dangerous. You asked about climate change. Take a look at the trend in AR, so atmospheric rivers, o o over the, the past. So this is the past right here. This is the future to 2100, and you can see this general increase in the intensity of atmospheric rivers. Uh, over the next, you know, let's say 30 to 40 years or so. Listen, Jeff, uh, really quickly before I let you go, still keeping mm -hmm. in, uh, you know, with the climate change subject, a uh, new study published in the Journal of Cryosphere. Uh, researchers found that the Earth lost 28 trillion metric tons of ice between uh, 1994 and 2017. Scientists also looked at the rate of how quickly the ice was melting. It looks like the rate is accelerating. You know, where are we seeing the most damage? Why is this happening? It seems like, you know, since the 90s, we've been talking about climate change, and I thought trying to make corrections doesn't seem to be working, at least in this area. Well, so far, it turns out that you can throw as much science as you want at people and policymakers, and there is at least a good portion of the population that doesn't want to believe it, but we can see the results of that. Sea level is rising at an accelerated pace because ice melt is rising at an accelerated pace. What this paper says is that the rate of ice melt has increased by 57 percent 
since the 1990s. And we're tracking at worst case high level kind of emission scenarios. So our computer models, we run scenarios out, you know, to 2050 and 2100. And right now the ice melt and sea level rise are both running at the top end of the different scenarios, like the high end scenario because of a lot of warming, and then the lower end scenarios because maybe there might be a little less warming in the future. We're tracking at high end for both uh, ice melt and obviously for sea level rise because as the ice melts, the sea level rises as well. And what does that mean? Well, you know, we've seen about 10 inches of sea level rise so far. Uh, we're definitely going to see another foot to foot and a half for sure. Uh, that's kind of baked into the system based upon just the rate of increasing sea level rise. But because we're tracking high end, it means we're likely to see closer to two to three feet of sea level rise by the end of this century. Now, the difference is a foot, foot and a half means tens of millions of people are displaced from their homes along the coastline of the world. That's not great. It may be somewhat manageable. But then it goes to three feet of sea level rise. If that happens, then it's hundreds of millions of people that are displaced from their home. That's not only a crisis for the people displaced, that's an international refugee and migration crisis, which causes international conflict. So that's the elephant in the room here. What keeps climate scientists mm. up at night is climate migration and how many people are going to be pushed into other parts of the world and cause conflicts around the world. That's what we're really concerned about. Yes. Or at least one of the things. It is all inter... Yes, it's all interconnected, and often the most vulnerable people mm -hmm. on the planet are the first to, um, you know, to have to deal with the Always. wrath of, of Mother Nature when it goes wrong. All right, Jeff, thank you so much. You can also check out Jeff's article about rising sea levels on CBSNews.com, and be sure to check out his reporting there as well. You can also check out our CBSN original, Rising Tide, Priced Out of Miami. It tells a story of how rising sea levels are threatening the city and what that means for low-income communities there. That is available to stream 24-7 at cbsnews.com Miami.